Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Shavi Zane, and I'm coming on to bring a message for all of you uh, light workers out there. Some people like to use the term light workers. I personally just call myself a vessel that's just carrying out my divine purpose in, you know, here on earth. But whatever you call yourself, you many of you might recognize the term light workers. So I'm bringing this message because one thing that you really want to be aware of is those people who take advantage of your light. Just as, I'll just say this, when you have spiritual gifts, I personally believe that spiritual gifts are far more valuable than anything that's tangible. Why? Because when you are aware of your spiritual gifts and you use them from a space of integrity, then you possess the ability to turn base metal into gold which is one of the most valuable things that we have here on earth. At least that's, you know, what we've coined it as gold and diamonds, right? So you have the ability to turn base metal into gold. You have the ability to be the alchemist, to attract things to you, to manifest, to create. When you have spiritual gifts and you've done the work to heal and you use them from a space of integrity, you can call those things in. And so I personally believe that spiritual gifts are far more valuable than anything that you could possess in a physical. Now, why do I, the reason why I'm saying this is because the same way that you would protect your physical, um, your physical property, anything that's of value to you, the same way you would protect those things. Let's just say you're a jeweler and you make beautiful gold jewelry and diamonds, you know, all of these things is genuine, right? Real diamonds and gold. And, you know, you're well known for your ability to create and to make beautiful earrings, bracelets. Just know that you're going to always have people who are lurking, trying to find a way to steal your valuables. Okay. Because they see the value in what you have. It's no different when it comes to those of you who have spiritual gifts and you have brought this forward. You're using these spiritual gifts because you're in your calling, you will, you too will attract people, beings who desire to stake, to take and to steal and to siphon your spiritual gifts, but not just to steal them. You will also attract people who will take advantage of you because another misconception about those of us who are light workers is that we're lightweights. <laughs> That's another misconception that we don't have that side to us that will create those healthy boundaries and say, hold up. No, you will not take advantage of me. No, you will not assume that because I recognize that my purpose here on earth is to help heal, to uplift, to enlighten, to bring guidance, clarity, to strengthen, empower, all of these things, right? A lot of people assume that we're pushovers. And that they can just come into our energy field and do whatever they want to do. Some people who are workers of darkness who really do desire to steal your spiritual gifts assume that you don't have that awareness of what they're doing or that you're so gullible and vulnerable or so eager to help heal others that you'll completely be blinded to their agenda. There are those people who are like that as well especially depending on the type of spiritual work that you do, okay? If you're an herbalist and you're out here saying, look, I heal people, that's that's what I do. You know, I'm all about health. I'm all about healing. I'm all about taking the natural route when it comes to healing. You might find that you get people who come into your energy that feel like, hey, because this is what you've been called to do, you should be willing to do it for free. These are, or, or whether you're, if you do what I do, you know, I read cards. That's one of my spiritual gifts. And I find that those people, there are, there are times when I get people that come in like, Hey, I don't have the money right now, but I would like to have a session because I need some guidance. And while there's nothing wrong with asking for someone to help you when you're in a time of need, there are others who actually come in anticipating that you are supposed to freely give of it because you're here to help others, right? Fact of the matter is, 
it's the it's that law of exchange okay you gotta you gotta balance out the scales now many of us who have who have creative uh who have spiritual gifts and who really genuinely recognize that our purpose here on earth is to heal humanity in whatever way we've been called to do many of us do a lot of things from behind the scenes i can personally speak for myself I do a lot of things from behind the scenes. There's things, there's rituals that I do that includes all of the chosen across the four corners of the earth that I don't always bring onto my channel to openly express to you all. And of course, outside of that, these messages that I bring are timeless. You can go back to my first message on the channel and you may find that there's still some things that will resonate with you to this day. I'm freely giving of... Um. I'm freely giving of the tools, okay, that you need in order to dig yourself up out of circumstances on a spiritual level. I'm freely giving of that. I'm not the type of reader that's going to come in and present a problem without bringing a solution on a spiritual level. That's my gift. And so just know that you will find, because I personally, I've, I've experienced this, not a lot, but enough to where it needs to be spoken about. You will find that there are people out here who would, who are always looking for a way to take advantage of the light workers because they just really believe that we're lightweights. And we didn't get here being lightweights. Light workers had to go through heavy stuff. And so I think people tend to think that, you know, when you're walking around and you, you know, you're, you're, you're meditating, you're humming, you're singing, you're playing in the grass, you're hugging trees, you're walking barefoot you dancing around, acting like a big kid. They just think that you don't have, that there's no polarity, that there's no opposite end, okay? There's two sides. And it doesn't mean that you as a light worker have to go to the extreme end of who you could be when it comes to going back to that side of you that could snap. But it does mean that you want to kind of draw in on that a little bit, draw in on that energy a little bit to let people know that you're not just some pushover that can be taken advantage of off the strength that they assume that that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be freely giving of your energy, your time, your gifts. That's not how this thing works. And so I wanted to bring this message forward just to let you all know, again, there are people out here who really do have an agenda against light workers. Some of them, they recognize the, um, the value in your spiritual gifts. And so they do sit back trying to conjure up ways to try and siphon and steal those gifts. So you want to be very selective about who you even work with at times. I mean, obviously you're protected by the most high in your spiritual team. But if you get those intuitive nudges that just says... This person right here, I can't do work. I can't work with them because it's just something. There's this nagging feeling that just tells me not to read for them or not to do a Reiki healing for them or not to, you know, do a sound bath healing, whatever it is that you do on a spiritual level. If you feel that there's some part of you that says that they're coming in with a different intention outside of healing, it's okay to turn people away. A lot of times, some light workers will avoid really stepping into their power and creating those healthy boundaries because those people who are narcissists will come in and say, well, obviously, you're not as, as, um, as loving as you said you was. Because if you was, then you would understand my circumstance and you would be willing to help me in spite of how you feel right now. In spite of what your intuition is telling you about me, you would still be willing to proceed forward. And so they try to play on your psyche to make you believe that somehow, oh, uh, you're fake, you're false, you're not real. Then on the other hand, you have those who come in to test you. They come in to test to see if your gifts are truly what you say they are. Okay, I've had, I've had a couple of people do that and I knew that they was doing it because, <laughs> it's just so funny. You know, I knew that they was doing it because I tell people all the time, if you're going to get a reading from me, if you have questions that you want answered, ask the questions. But if you call me and you sitting on the phone and you have, you, you're not saying anything, but yet 
It's like you're trying to test to see, well, do I know? Do I know this or do I know that? I tell people all the time, I'm not here to tell you what you already know. I'm here to tell you what you need to know. And so if you're going to waste your own time paying for a whole session just to sit on a phone to see if I know what's going on in your current circumstance, then I don't know what to tell you. You still got work to do. Okay? You still got work to do. But I will say that you want to be very aware of these types of individuals who use and misuse light workers and those who are jealous of the gifts and want the gifts for themselves, but they're not willing to do the work to develop that gift or to bring that gift out of themselves. They're not willing to do that, to, to, um, to discover that gift. It takes work. It takes for you to clear out all of that extra junk in order to start hearing those intuitive messages clearly. Because remember, you are nothing more than a vessel or a channel when it comes to being used on a, on a level of doing spiritual work. You're a vessel. You're a channel. Uh, so you're picking up on energy. You're picking up on messages in order to help heal and awaken others. And so if you're going to be a channel, you can't be all full of static because you're going to get a staticky message. And you will have staticky results. Okay? And so it takes work. You have to be willing to constantly be the practitioner to yourself before you can be a practitioner to others. And so many people out here really believe that they can take a shortcut. Let me let me observe this person over here. Oh, they got these gifts. Oh, okay. Well, let me see what type of spell work, what type of dark magic, what type of rituals I can do to siphon their gifts. Or, you know, whatever it is they out here trying to do, they can hang it up. Because on this end, if you call me a light worker, this particular light worker is not a lightweight. And so if I find that, I, because I've done it before, I've blocked people. If I find that, okay, the energy is just not up to part, it's something about this person that is really not receptive to what I'm bringing. They just come in, you know, if, if that person came in with this energy of, I'm just here to test you. I, shoot, I've had people where I'd be like, look, I, I can give you a refund. Okay. Um, or just letting them know off top. No, I cannot do this, this reading for you. You got to be very particular about who you allow into your energy and who you allow, who you are casting your pearls before. Okay. Just like biblical texts say, don't cast your pearls before swine. Because fact of the matter is, some people just don't see the value in your gifts. Then there's others that do see the value in your gifts. And all they're willing, all they're interested in doing is trying to take and steal. Because they see that they, they see how highly valuable those gifts are. And they're not willing to do the work to discover it on, them, on, their, on their own. So I would just say, you know, step into your power recognize who you are does it take away from the love that you have for humanity if you stand your ground absolutely not if anything it balances out the energy and it teaches people how to treat you and it's, it's you protecting yourself to ensure that you remain balanced and that you're not just out here being depleted and drained by energy vampires so that's what i wanted to say y'all and for those of you who think that you can take advantage of me, you got another thing coming, okay? Because I'm not the one. <laughs> I'm not desperate for material things, okay? And so I think a lot of times, too, people tend to think that when you have spiritual gifts, somehow you're desperate to get clients or people to come in. It's not that serious, y'all. The most high is my supplier, the most high is my provider. And so if it didn't come through monetary means, it's going to come through some way, shape or form to ensure that me and mine are good. Because I've, I've, I'm a living witness and a testimony of that. When the paper money wasn't coming through on a regular basis, I still had everything that I need because I was supplied in other ways to ensure that whatever we needed, we never lacked. And so I stand on that today because that time period, that season of my life, it, it showed me something. It proved to me that the Most High won't let me dash a toe. 
And so for those people out there who think that because I promote love, because I promote healing, because I promote transformation, that somehow I'm a pushover, you got another thing coming. And you, you might want to go on bark down the next street because this one right here is not the one. So I love you all. For those of you who find value in, in who I am because you value who you are, we are we're a reflection of one another. I welcome you. But for those of you who don't see your own self-value and therefore you don't see the value that I possess, we ain't meshing and you ain't my tribe. And that's how you as a spiritualist, for those of you out there who, who do have gifts, spiritual gifts that you're using to help heal others, you got to see it from that standpoint and you got to operate from that position. It doesn't take away from who you are or what you have to offer. It actually enhances it. So I love you all and I'll talk to you all next time.